Hello, this is Diane with Diane's Blue Hearts Butterflies.com. And I wanted to share this foil technique. It's uh, called Blue Ice. Um, and then I also wanted to share a fold, fun fold technique. And this is a corner flip fold. And this is to go along with my foils class. The um, technique for the corner flip fold I did copy from Rachel Tessman because it, it seemed to be a little bit easier for me to explain in my class. And then the black ice technique I got from several uh, people that I watched on the internet. And I don't know if you can tell, one of these I just left plain and the other one I did try to uh, color. Now, when it comes to coloring on foils, or stamping on foils, you have to stamp using this stays on ink so that it doesn't smear. If you try using the Memento ink, it will smear because this is more of a dye, dye based and this one's um, more of a solvent ink. So this will dry quickly and this will not. The problem comes in that the blends markers, which are best to use on foil, don't work well with the stays on. So you can see that there is some lines in these uh, in this sunflower, but when I went over and used the markers, the blends, which are alcohol based and they dry faster, then it kind of erased some of those lines. So you can you follow your own preference. Maybe you have a stamp that it's not gonna matter very much, but I did use the um, old olive for the leaves and then um, the mango and the daffodil for the, the sunflower. And then I also stamped the big sunflower inside and I um, used the markers. This is the daffodil and um, mango as well as the inside I went ahead and colored using the black the, and the light black and the other black. And so let me kind of go over the products that I used for these. Oh, get those out of the way. Now, the Celebrate Sunflowers. I had actually gotten this one when it came out in the last annual catalog because I thought it was just so beautiful. And I just haven't been able to come up with an occasion to teach it in the class. Um, I have used the dyes before in some of the other um, projects that I have done with the, especially with these little, um, don't know what to call them except just uh, wheat sheaves or whatever. It's just some kind of a, a leafy stem thing. But anyway, I fell in love with the stamp set and I wanted to share it with this technique. And so that's why I chose it. And then I also, this one is in the annual catalog and um, it's not bundled anymore. This one is the uh, Very Best Occasions and it is in a bundle with a new um, punch that uh, puts an image, oh gosh, not an image. It punches a design into the corner of the paper or punches a hole. And these are just some really great occasions for different things. And I'm using the one that's sending you smiles for every moment of your special day. There's a couple of them that are great for Christmas. There's a um, one for sympathy and uh, love you, things like that. There's even one that says you're the best ever. And then I'm using the silver edged ribbon in this project. And the Rustic Harvest um, Designer Series paper, this is in the January to December mini catalog for 2022. And then I'm also using the silver, the light silver out of the silver pack of foils. There's kind of a, a darker and then a brushed um, kind of purpley silver. And then there's this, the lighter silver silver in this pack. And so those are that. And then I will go over 
the card card kit. What all I used there. Um, this is what I have prepared, and the dimensions are also available on my website at Diane's Blue Hearts and Butterflies .com. And wanted to be able to share that. So the pieces that I am using is a crushed curry cardstock. This is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter, and that's just a standard sized base here in the US. And just give it a burnish on that score line. And then I have a piece of that designer series pack, and I used up all of the the Cajun crazed one, but that's the one I wanted to use because it really gave a uh, good contrast on here. Then I have one, a piece for the inside to stamp and do the sentiment on, and this is five and a quarter by four, which is standard for that. And then oh, I need to not put that in there. And then this is a two and three quarter inch silver foil square. And the reason I did two and three quarters is because the corner flip part makes a three inch square on the top. So this one is a quarter inch less than that. And then I also had a whole bunch of the, again, a retired product, Holiday Rhinestone Basic Jewels, but I liked the, um, I think it's the pumpkin pie color because it was kind of yellow like the crushed curry. And then I cut about an 11 inch piece of the ribbon to use for this. And then I also included a three inch square post-it note because this is what helped Rachel in being able to get people to visualize where their cuts need to be made on the card front to be able to create that front fold. <coughs> Excuse me just a moment. I'm going to set that off to the side. <coughs> I want to start with the foil because I wanted to go ahead and stamp this. I'm using the Stamparatus because it keeps it in place and if I don't get a good stamp or stamped image, then I can redo it in the same spot. So, what I did was I took and drew where I wanted that on the um, graph paper. It has it comes with oh and a okay. So normally there's a little foam mat that goes in here. So if you're using your photopolymer, then you'll need to have that foam mat in here that raises it up so that it can make a, a better image. But when you're using the red rubber, you do not need to have a uh, foam mat underneath here because the foam is already attached to the stamp. So anyway, I drew where I wanted this and this paper is all the way up into the, um, the corner. And then this image is going to be right in here so I'm putting my magnets just across the corners to help hold it in place. I did get this off a little bit. Let me bring it back down. These magnets are very super um, magnetic, so I wanted to make sure that uh, there we go that I keep them far enough apart so they don't click together. Sometimes they can get stuck together or if they slam together too too hard, they can actually break, which is why I covered mine in a, a t colorful tape is so that if they did break, at least it's gonna stay inside of the tape. Um, you can get new ones of those. So again, this is, we need to use the stays on ink for this. Now, Another thing that I've learned about stays on ink is you can use it with any of your stamps. Um, but the solvent, the cleaner, stays on cleaner, is very harsh. 
so you do not really want to use that on your photopolymer stamps. Instead, take it to the sink, wash it with um, soap and water, because that is better to clean that off. The solvent, actually, how do I know this? Because I used it on it before I ever found out, and one of my stamps, it's kind of got a little straight line that's supposed to be in it, and the straight line is not exactly straight in one little place. So I do not encourage people that got a good, good stamp there. So anyway, I wouldn't recommend using the solvent with the photopolymer stamps and instead just uh, use soap and water. Uh, sometimes you can do pretty good at the stamp chamois, but it will still have some black on it. So the reason I did this first is I wanted it to be able to sit aside and let the um, ink dry on that very well. And I used this underneath so that I could get a better uh, inking on my stamp because this kind of bends a little bit. You need to have something kind of under it to help stabilize it. So that I'm going to set aside. I love the stamp apparatus for so many different things. And then next I'm going to work on the fun fold. So this one, you have to adhere your designer series paper on here first. Now this one goes into another kit that I um, have to send off to someone and I found a piece of of the designer series paper that is left over that's big enough that I could use for my sample here. So I'm going to actually change up and do the uh, old olive with kind of little doodles on it. But the reason that we need to do that first is because we need to be able to cut through both pieces and when we flip it, the other, the, this piece will stay and show through on the other side. So we're going to need to get adhesive not just around the edges, but also in the middle. So I just kind of run this up here. And you want it to be in the middle too to hold where we're going to cut that so that it adheres to all of those places. And again, a lot of people use the liquid glue. I am just not a great liquid gluer because I get it everywhere and I don't like having sticky stuff. So this I'm going to put on here, leaving kind of an equidistant border. And then this is where the great idea came from. Uh, I had gotten my measurements messed up but this helped us in the class to do it, help the people to understand what they're doing. So this three by three post-it note, you put it up in the corner, all the way in the corner and all the way to the side of this, because this is the area we're gonna cut. You're going to leave five eighths of an inch on both of these pieces because that's going to create the mechanism that flips and holds it, keeps it on as part of the card. So I will walk you through those measurements as I go. So at first you're going to lay this in portrait with the top of the card front, which is this side, is going to be on the left side. You're going to put it into the trimmer at the three inch mark. And then the a good thing about the trimmer is it has numbers on this side for the where you're cutting. So you're going to line this, uh, the, your cutting blade, which is the darker one, up at three inches on here and then you're going to go up until you get to the five eighths which is the eighth mark just past the half so I'm going to turn it a little bit so that I can see it better so you're going to cut it 
the half mark is here and the 5 8 inch mark is there and there's a little I don't know how to describe it kind of a little indention showing the center of that blade so then you're going to lift that up and yes it's a little because I didn't get it exactly square so then you're going to take this turn the card front to the landscape position with the bottom of the card front along the top of the trimmer. If you want, you can lay the top of, along the bottom, it's just the reversed, but you're going to line it up again at the three inch, let me get that out of my way, at the three inch along this side. And then you're going to want to start at two and a half, because now we're cutting from the bottom top to the top. So two and a half, we'll line it up there, and you're going to go down to four and seven eighths, which is five eighths inch from the bottom, or from the top of this card. So go down, and it's four and seven eighths, which is this, the eighth mark just before the five. So you'll want to check it to see if you got through. And there's a little bit of piece that I missed right here. So I'm gonna put it back in, line it up at three. And then go back up here and then come down till I can kind of fit it, feel it hit that score line. And now you can see that it is cut through. So then I can put this trimmer away I can take off this little guide. It does help to give you vision of where you're, you're working. So then we're going to take this bottom corner, push it in, and then we're going to be trying to fold it over. And then you're gonna to want to make sure that this side lines up with this score line, trying to keep it level and then also keeping this and this line level. And then I just kind of did that with my finger and then I came back with my bone folder. Now mine tended to crack a little bit so I just went in with my snips and cut off that little piece that cracked not going to be really seen very well. So in order to keep this down you'll use either glue or uh, glue dots or something but before you put it down what I did was I took the ribbon and I wanted the knot on the inside because I was afraid that the knot would if, if I had it around the other side this knot might cause a problem with the me being able to adhere my square on. So I had the knot on the inside to just give it a little bit there. So I'm going to do that here is I'm just wrapping it and you can do it either way. You can do it up and down however you want to do it. I chose to do it this direction. And I basically just tied a knot in it. And this is sometimes where you need about five hands. And then I can just trim off the edge. This one kind of frayed on me a little bit, so I'm gonna trim that. Throw that away. So, then on this side is where you're going to put your yeah, stamped piece. So this one I have already stamped the image of the, the large sunflower. And I colored, I colored it so um, 
if you want, you can color it. If you don't want, you don't have to. But um, I'm going to color that after I've already got it on here. It'll soak through this one, but it won't go through this one. And so I'm going to just go ahead and add some adhesive here. I just di didn't want to take up the time coloring. There are many different videos on how to use the blends. Um, the blends I like somewhat better than the Stampin' Right markers because you can kind of get different shading and uh, you don't get the harsh lines like you do um, with the Stampin' Right markers or even the pencils. Now if you wanted to use pencils you could and um, a trick that I have learned when using those is if you'll use the um, blender pens then you can go over your colored pencil and it'll actually um, I don't know how to describe it kind of make those lines go away it kind of blends it it's kind of like doing a watercolor but without the water to uh, go everywhere so anyway I'm gonna stick this in here um, I can also add a sentiment later and then this piece you like I said you can either adhere put some glue this way or you could just use some glue dots and be able to adhere it so I'm going to use some glue dots just to do this faster stick one on the corner because it shouldn't be seen from the other side because it's way out on the outer edge but I'm just going to use the one glue dot there um, that one just happens to be a larger glue dot I grabbed the wrong ones and then we could finish up our um, black ice technique and then adhere that on there so again this is using the stays on ink because it is what's best to use with the foils and you're basically going to take the corner edge of the stamp pad and you're going to start on your um, graph paper or whatever you want to call it the grid paper and you're going to pull down don't want to stop like I did I kind of got it hung up there and then I went from the bottom and dragged the same way like I said this one kind of got away from me I'm going to try that again I do have another piece over here get that black off my fingers it's best if you can keep it just flowing in one motion and you don't have to push down too hard you do want a little bit on a pressure at the top so that it kind of starts that but then you want to kind of lift up a little bit until you get it like you want and then I do from the other end as well just so it kind of has the similar drag marks at the top and bottom so that kind of gives that old age tin look so that's part of it and then you're going to take have it over here try to get this stuff out of my way you're gonna to, to finish off this technique you're going to use Versamark and clear embossing powder this is some very old stuff. It's It takes a long time to use up some of these embossing powders, and I've had mine for a while, but uh, they're still good. And you really want to kind of let this be dry because you can see that somebody had used it in my class and got a little bit of uh, black on it. And uh, so you really want to set that aside to dry a little bit um, off on its own. I'm going to hope that it's dry enough, but you basically just put this down on here. You can drag it if you want, but it's not necessary really. It's kind of trying to give that old tin type look to the picture. And then I'm going to put it inside of this and just pour the clear emb embossing powder on it. got 
got some things in here. All right. And then you'll just pounce that off. And then when you heat set it, it will I'll set that off to the side for right now. I'll do it later. When you heat set it, then it gets this kind of bubbled up and uh, tin looking type uh, stuff on it and kind of becomes a bit shinier um, on there. So that's what you're going to do with this. Let me, I don't have mine plugged in. So I'm gonna just, I thought I had one already completed, but maybe I was just wrong. So I apologize. Let me see if I can get that plugged in just a moment. Okay, so I got this over here. You're going to want to Heat up your embossing tool a little bit, let it get some heat to it. I'm just going to use my take your pick tool to help me hold this so it doesn't blow away. But once the heat tool is warmed up, it can turn this stuff very quickly, this heat emboss. And you'll be able to tell, just want to look along and make sure you get that. And it doesn't take very long. Now this is pretty warm, so you want to let it sit a few seconds to cool down before you add it to the card front. So while that's cooling a little bit, I am going to take my Memento Black and stamp my sentiment inside my card and this is a cling set it's red rubber just, I think it's just so fine so I'm gonna stamp that on there there we go these things out of the way. I'm going to go ahead while I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit to go ahead and put this clear powder away. Alright, so I have this. I just need to color the flower and then I do want to make sure you're Card is burnished so it really folds. And then this, I'm just going to, yeah, it's cooled down. It's not sticky anymore. I'm going to put this on that three inch square that we flipped. So there's a little bit of a border all the way around because this this axe is part of that square. And there you have it. So then you have kind of a cute little card and people will wonder how in the world you did that. So I appreciate you sharing your time with me and doing these cards. I'm also going to put some of those gems on here. If I can get it to come out, come on. And kind of spread them where I want them. There we go. And there's an great techniques. Again, the direction or the uh, dimensions for the card, the pieces to make the card are available on my website at Diane's Blue Hearts and Butterflies.com. Um, and 
I hope that you enjoyed this and that you will subscribe to my YouTube channel, share it with others um, that you think might be interested. And also, um, if you would, if you'd like to see other um, videos that I make as they come out, you can click the bell icon and it'll notify you when I have uploaded a new video. I do um, try to do my blog every month. So I do this once a month, um, and I'm grateful for the time that you spent with me. And you could check out my blog for other cards that I make and other videos I've done. Thank you.